By the way, Yanko, here's a good angle I thought we could segue into, because obviously we, we want to touch on the e stuff, and I feel like this is the perfect moment for you, Yanko, because I know you were always, thanks to your connection with Faze, and you used to be there, I know you were always mega pissed off with the whole way Robin was treated with the demerit yeah. system for the major. If people don't know, the thing that makes me the most mad, like, I will say, people do keep getting off track on this discussion. e ban is different from Valve ban, but as Richard pointed out in the video, it seems like e were probably the ones who fucking forced Valve to go that direction anyway. So in a way, they're responsible for that anyway. So technically, the, for example, the ban that Peacemaker got taken back was the e ban now. It yep. wasn't the same as the major one. But even so, the idea that now, basically, we find out like e doesn't really matter as long as you have access to fucking Saul Goodman's number. That's just e instantly counted and just fucking <laughs> checkmate. Like fucking like... Oh, 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 like fucking teleport behind the guy and he just gets killed like anime style but because no, Saul no, Goodman no, yeah I know exactly so now that we found that out dude that pisses me off when I think back now because what it makes me realise now is the only logical step is actually to unwind all those fucking bands to say like, fuck this stupid standard where if you just did it and you didn't report you're the biggest criminal of all time and actually it's worse than the Hunter one it's people like Robin dude he can yeah. never get that back he can't go back in a time machine and re-experience his team that he worked with for years winning the major like like, remember, the most majors anyone in history is one's four. Like, he might not even get a second one. Like, I th that is that does piss me off when I think that. What do you think, Yanko? Well, that's the second one. The first one was in Stockholm, which is his home country. Oh, <laughs> yes. Of Sweden, yeah. right? Like, yeah. so the, that's the first. And it's the first one after the pandemic. First one in two years, a massive event, right? So, yeah, I, I mean, I was really mad once you come to the realization how fucked up and how grossly mismanaged like that whole process was because initially it did seem like they knew what they were doing right and they were like kind of you know and also i mean the coaching bug well i i was coaching still then like i was shocked like that was first like lord tagged me and a bunch of other coaches and was like hey have you guys seen this have you, have you experienced this i was like no it never happened to me like i don't know this is the first time i've seen this and then you learn that you know it's been around since what 2017 or it's been happening on occasion to to other players but yeah for me it's just the incompetence and how it's being handled and i don't even care you know like i don't even want to go as deep into details whether it's like oh did hunden relay the information did the players receive the information what was it it's just like this whole process and everything and you make these decisions and you're not even like as soon as someone fights back at least a little bit like that's it like that tells you how strongly they feel about their sentences and convictions and whatnot when they can't even really fight it against the case that was the most publicized and whatever the most obvious or or whatnot so for me it's just i i'd like to think that i i believe that a body like that should exist on some level but not like this you know you can they they can probably come out and say well we don't have the funds to do all this well then don't do it or ask for more funds like if you can't do it right don't do it i tweeted out they're doing more harm than good because they're also making this the scene and the game as a whole look like a joke where it's like oh you're cheating we're gonna ban you but then you fight a little bit like even the stuff for the antwerp major with zach and i think peacemaker they're like and peacemaker, they, yeah. they, they just banned them like two days or like five days yes. before the event starts and then five days after the event is over they're like oh we kind of you know, we screwed this one up like you guys run bad and they had to miss the fucking major on teams that yes. actually really needed them right like it's you know luckily you can argue on some level right like when you have a guy like carrigan you know like he can do a lot of the stuff and whatnot but robin is just like such an he does a lot for that team it's basically like coach a team like that needs they don't need a super in-depth tactical guy they need a guy who's gonna keep like the atmosphere up and, and help the players work with each other in a team where you have a lot of stars and where the expectations are really high i mean the expectations for phase were the same this year like they were for g2 and vitality and all three teams made changes look how much vitality and, and g2 were crumbling throughout the year because they their issues were more in terms of team cohesion and like kind of people having more fun and not being as stressed than they were that they were playing awful counter-strike all the time they were playing awful counter-strike at times and whatnot but that's not the point point. and phase yes they were playing better counter-strike but i think they had a much better atmosphere and approach between the players and they always believed in the win and that's why 
how many bullshit rounds have we seen from FaZe and their individuals in some of those championship rounds. And you get that from every championship level team. Every team that had an era was winning important games. Like, And oh, we certainly. always say the same thing. It's like, you are a championship level team, not because you play your best game most often. It's because when you play your C game, it's still good enough to, to yes. beat a team that's you know, object objectively worse for you. Like your floor is way higher than some of the other teams. So yeah, I, I think it's just for me, Isik either completely rehaul it and, you know, get other players within the scene. Obviously it has to be Blast and ESL as the big TOs in the scene. You know, whether CSPPA is like a part of it, I don't know, but put more money into it, give them like the proper staffing and the resources to do their job correctly. Or just don't do it and leave it up to the TOs for their own tournament for to well, ha have to administer everything. Also, I mean, that would actually invest them with some level of authority, right? Because the problem right now is that they don't have any inherent authority if the tournament organizers are not backing them. And I think, like, if we go back to the coaching bug, I do think that some of the things that ESIC provided were a valuable service, but... At the same time, them just issuing bans independently of their own decree requires buy-in from other tournament organizers or from Valve. And I think you have to be able to both pay for these investigations with these experts that don't necessarily work for you but are critical to maintaining competitive integrity within your scene. And then you also have to kind of have them be an independent, you know, adhere by, by agreement to their independent bans and everything like that. Otherwise, the authority isn't there. It's it's a very weird situation to have ESIC, right? I, I, yeah, go on. That's it. I have, I have a question for Richard on this topic, actually, because I've watched some of your videos on this particular thing, and I understand yeah. why. If people don't know, I always draw this parallel, right? To me, ESIC for Richard is what Sir Scoops hoped CSPPA would be in his worldview. Something he wanted for a long, long time, not least because you hope when it's up and running and it actually serves the purpose it's made for, it doesn't have to be people like me and you every day. Several times with you as a friend because you criticized it. <laughs> that, that, that's maybe a bit of a tough one, sure. There is that distinction. By yeah, the way, yeah. I, I even bring this up as it's someone where uh, like, it's actually uh, I'll tie Scoots in again as someone who I do have admiration for even if maybe I don't like yeah. him at the moment which basically Same. I would say is this one of the things that Sir Scoots always told me in esports in the industry was he actually said for real he was looking forward through things like CSPPA to the days where you'd have a war chest and when people like orgs wanted to enforce a fucking shit up contract you would go you know what that doesn't work anymore let's see you in court and let's see how this actually plays out like the problem I have is this which I want to ask you about is like, you already listened in the past. Like, the problem is, it's not just this coaching bug thing, which as each wave comes along, they seem to handle worse and worse and lose track of what the precedent is and how the difference between the bugs are. That's not clear to fans at all, by the way. People do not understand. They think that some people are just getting totally different punishments. And like I said earlier, it hasn't even been well communicated, the difference between a Valve demerit major system ban and an ESIC ban. I think people think it's the same thing. So there's that. But the bigger thing to me is, isn't the entire concept of ESIC a bit flawed if they don't have some sort of war chest to go to do court cases or some sort of way of battling well, these people don't they need it to to exist they, well yes and but but here's the problem uh there so they're they're a non-profit organization and we don't know anything about their finances nope <laughs> wasn't there also that tweet? I remember it was from... Uh, who was it? No, no, it, it was the guy with red eye. Luke, or what's Luke Cotton. There you go, Luke Cotton, who's a UK mm. veteran in the industry. He actually made a tweet famously when they first launched and said something like, if you're a non-profit, you have to publish like your... Like basically your books or something along those lines, right? Something mm. akin to that. I don't think yes, done that. And, and and that was back in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty, I think. Right? Early twenty twenty, yeah. Yeah, and um Ian Ian Smith, the the founder of ESIC, did promise there would be a full accounting available. And so far, no, there it, it hasn't happened. And listen, it's no secret that I've been an advocate for, for ESIC. Um but the, things like this are extremely uh, troubling because, you know, we, we need to know how much money they're getting because we're assuming they don't have a war chest. We're, 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 maybe, it, maybe there's some rule about nonprofits that mean they can't have a war chest. I, I would be surprised if that was the case. I imagine there has to be some provisions for legal funding should you need it if you're a nonprofit, um, especially given that this is 
effectively an, an, an entity that may face legal pushback. But we, we don't know. We don't know how much their partners pay them. We don't know how much ESL pays them. We don't know who's on what salaries. Uh, we don't know how the money is spent. And so the, the presumption has always been they don't have enough money. But we cannot say that with any authority. Um, even though Ian, when I, I spoke to him recently, it was like the first time I'd spoke to him in, I think, over a year. It was when I was doing that whole ESIC whistleblower story with that mad fucker who, uh, like, doxed me for having the temerity to say, would you like me to platform your allegations and investigate them on your behalf so I could definitively prove them should they be true? And for that, he uh, doxed me uh, because he didn't like the fact... What was it that upset him? Oh, yeah, I did another story about that Akuma team. And, you know, like, uh, we, and I, I called the video Akuma Matata. And we took the manager of Akuma and put his uh, face on the pig's body from Lion King. Because that's the song from Lion King. And I think... Bumba, I believe it's called, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> you know, yeah, and, uh, and, Richard, Richard slowly explains jokes. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but, but just in case anyone doesn't get it, because they certainly didn't. They thought I was insulting his weight, which would be like the pot and the proverbial kettle, but whatever. Anyway, so he, he was really upset about that and basically uh, even tried to induce me, I think, to give him some money at some point uh, under the promise of sending me some um, information about an exploit. It was all very weird. But 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 anyway, here's all you need to know about how dysfunctional Isak is. This guy is, like, trust me, I interviewed him on three separate occasions. He's a fucking nut job. Uh, he's accused almost every professional player of fixing a match, which, by the way, I don't necessarily disagree with him on that point. Um, but, um, you know, he's done it with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. He's accused me of taking backhanders from, from Isik to my face, even though that makes no sense. That I did crack me up, though, because if you don't know, Monty, what happened was Richard had already done back and forth all these articles, and this guy basically said to Richard... Once he's found out like, Richard wouldn't just agree with everything he said, like, for example, just publish yeah. things about evidence. He goes to Richard like, oh, well, actually, now I know why you're doing this, because I, I heard that they had 60 grand that they were paying a mm. video. Idiot. That was obviously your secret, like, payoff secret money, which is like, what? Why well, are you yeah. saying this now? What? Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. And, and so, so anyway, so all you need to know about how dysfunctional they are is they hired him on a six figure salary. Fuck it, hell. Come on. So so what what experience is this guy? By By the way. Like, listen, I, I don't know ethically where I whether, whether I would could even take the job. I don't know where it falls into. I certainly couldn't work as a journalist if I took it. Um, that that's a given. But they they've never even sounded me out. Like they never they didn't come to me. It's like I, I've done investigations and given them my findings gratis. <laughs> and they didn't even say like, "Hey, want a six figure job?" They didn't even ask like politely over well, a cup of fucking tea. And they hire this fucking nut job just because, like, who says I have my own database? His database is garbage. It's like screenshots of going, "Yeah, that guy fixed a match in like 2017." It's like it, it, it doesn't meet the evidentiary standard. And yet, Isik was so enamored with him, they hired him. So I mean, listen, uh, the, the the past few months for me, it's been a real crucible it's like a, you know a trying to accept that i don't think isik as it stands um can be what i hope they were going to be remember we're still waiting on the north american match fixing thing all those motherfuckers will be retired in valorant you know they're, 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 they'll all be retired by the time the story comes yes. out and i don't think it i, I don't think it's going to come out because I, I what what i'm what i'm starting to see you'll notice these things that all of E6 flaws have been at the investigation point. Yes. That's where it's all fallen down. And, you know, just to make two final points, I'll shut the fuck up because I could talk about E6 all day. I'll save that for my own stream. The, 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 the two things are this uh, they should never have got involved in, ch in cheating because they don't know anything about the games. Yes. They should they should they should have they should have disseminated that information to TOs and said do do with it what you will. They should have given it to Valve, showed them their findings, and said what do you want to do about this. They didn't. They made determinations that made no sense. That's how you end up with Robin sat at home for two fucking majors for 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 losing a game sixteen one, experiencing a bug once, and reporting that he experienced it, and walking away from his PC. 
and he's done two major bands. Meanwhile, guys like Hunt, and I mean, obviously, he's not going to be at a major. He probably will be when he works for Astralis. But you, you know what I mean? He just gets to rizzle, rizzle, dizzle his way back into the scene. And not only did he abuse the bug in the game, self-incriminate, then try and get uh, someone with autism uh, or someone on the autistic spectrum to also self-incriminate by trying to yeah. deceptively trick them. He then, after he came back from that ban, leaked his team's strap book uh, under inducement of money to a rival team who he wanted to go and work for, who would, by all accounts, behind the scenes, offered him a job and, and, fucked, and, and they played each other at the tournament he did it at. And when he's it, back. He, he's eligible uh, to have a job. He's eligible to go to a CSGO major. Like, the whole thing is a fucking mess. So, yeah, they should never go into the cheating, and they absolutely should just not be talking publicly about the investigation will drop by X date. Investigations don't work like that. That would be like a detective going to a fucking grieving family. We'll find your fucking daughter's killer by, ooh, Tuesday. You know, you don't do it. You let your yeah. work speak for itself. But for me, it's also, I was disgusted when initially the bands came out at the orgs who just because they were banned from from coaching they weren't yes. banned from counter-strike as the game or being involved in any capacity right so the the orgs they just moved coaches to like an analyst position mm -hmm. yep. and i even know for a fact some of these coaches were with the team in practice in oh, the same role yes right so they would yeah, basically just at the time not be with them during the game and not be on team speak during the game but let's say if a team is danish and the players are all playing from copenhagen that band guy could be in the next room and in between maps they could still all sit down together and he could like prepare them for the for the following map and it's like i don't think there's any doubt that hunden was like a good coach if we disregard like the team that he oh, knows shit. the game and that he was like of great benefit to heroic or that twista was very helpful to ants at the time right but the the point is like don't you have any fucking principle at all? Is it really just down to winning at all costs? Like, I, I couldn't understand that at all. That's why I gave props mm -hmm. to Mouse at the time, who just straight up cut yes. ties with Reg and all complete, just yep. fired him. And he was probably doing a lot for that team as well and for their success, right? It probably wasn't an easy thing to do. But at some point, you're like, you, you either have integrity or you don't. It's it's exactly because they were helpful to your team that you need to cut ties yes. to show that your integrity is for you above everything else. And you'd rather lose without him than win with him. By the way, at one point I want to just circle back on, because I haven't seen people emphasize this one enough. This is where, like, the most boring thing, I think, about realization I've had in the last few years of esports is I used to feel like I was sort of, like, on the cutting edge, like, I'm the one putting it all together, till I realized, like, it's just people can't read. That's it. People mm. in esports don't read, and they can't read. Like, you can put all the info, and they'll never put the two concepts together and go. Like, I'll give you an example. If you go and read that series Richard wrote about this match fixer, uh, sorry, the guy from ESIC who was investigating in the match fixing, like exposing it all and calling people out, right? There is a part, no joke, where he admits he himself was putting bets on these games. So he himself, the person playing the that role was of the his police, expertise. an investigator. It was, it was like a criminal. Yeah. You know, joining the FBI. So basically. he basically is himself corrupt, which, spoiler, means you can then no longer trust a single word out of his mouth. He is shown he does not have integrity himself. And then secondly, here's the other part that that immediately made me think of is... What sort of background checks is ESIC running? So the guy that you hired, like Richard says, six-figure salary to help with match fixing and this sort of stuff, himself is involved with the crime. So you failed on the character test immediately. And then here's the second one. The second he doesn't work for you anymore is trying to sell that information, if not sell other things. Like, who the fuck are you hiring? He's, you know what I he, mean? He's out there blackmailing teams right now. Uh, my last article of the year is, uh, well... I also started a bit of a spicy one uh, about Intel and how ESL have mismanaged the biggest sponsorship deal in esports. So maybe that, yeah. Yeah, maybe that comes out. Yeah. Maybe I'll save that for the 1st of January. Happy New Year, dickheads. Who knows, right? But uh, the, um, yeah, like the last article I'm writing is he's been going to these play. He's going to players and saying, pay me money. I will give you the evidence. It doesn't even work. It's a screenshot. It's easily replicatable. It's not like a fucking. Why I is he making like a movie? I know, like. I know, like, like yeah, it's all 
you, you give him the give him the sack of money. He hands you the screenshot. Then he goes, sets it yeah. on fire. Well, that's that taken care of. Yeah, they, <laughs> you're free to go. The message will self destruct. I know the code exactly. Is, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, so uh, he's doing that, and um, and and when when people decline, because like trust me, I've seen the type of things he considers evidence. Um, when people decline, he says, right, I'm going to talk to all the invite t tournaments and invite cups you're, that you would ordinarily get invited to, which, spoiler, they only exist for match-fixing purposes anyway, half of them, um, and, and you won't get invited anymore. Uh, so he's running a shakedown operation. Makes me wonder as well, you know, what information he had access to while he was at ESIC that he's now able to utilize for this nefarious purpose. I mean, it's just another embarrassment. It, it, you know, like what the, the the singular, like you can talk about how we should have had a fucking governing body in esports in some capacity. The problem was we never had one because no one wanted to give up the power. Why am I going to let you make the choice? Nobody ever wanted an independent body. It was always, I, I have my own anti-cheat. I have my own oh. rules. I have my own bans, right? I, I decide in, in, in lieu of the developer saying anything, what I say in my little kingdom goes. Everyone wanted their own little fiefdom. That was what it was all about, right? And, and ho hopefully it would be the biggest one. So we, we should have had an ESIC 10 years ago. We should have well, had an ESIC or equivalent after the StarCraft scandal. In StarCraft, sure. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking StarCraft 2. I'm talking when the same thing that fucking happened in, in you know, Brood War happened again in StarCraft 2, the exact same thing. We have to recognize, uh, like, esports right now, is it, it's all a joke. It's sick. It's WWE. Like, if you go down to tier two in any esport, it's just fixing galore. And it would have been well, great to have had a body that could have addressed that. But unfortunately, we got we got ESIC instead. Well, but I'm not sure that ESIC is, is in and of itself, you know, unsavable. And I think that as no, we're talking not, about... They have to make fundamental changes. Sure. Uh, but I think we should talk about those fundamental changes because it's the state of CSGO right now. And to boil this down, basically, it's that we have... Uh, an aspiring governing body that really has no authority and doesn't have transparent sources of funding and that the developer and the tournament organizers don't don't necessarily have to listen to and aren't invested in. And I think one of the interesting things about the purchase of ESL and Face It and their merger by the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund is that we've really drastically changed, and this does tie into ESIC, we've changed the mission of ESL Face It Group, EFG, which is their new name, mm. from a publicly traded company owned by this Swedish media company, MTG, where we know that if we had done the state of CSGO at the end of last year on this show, what it would have been is that ESL is guilty of churning out a bazillion hours of Counter-Strike, way more than are necessary, constantly overrunning the calendar because yep. they are getting whipped by, by MTG and their shareholders to produce more viewable hours, to produce more resources at the lowest cost possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we have to say now about ESL, and it is going to, I think, take some time for the dust to settle because these are two massive companies that had to spend most of this year completing this merger and trying to figure out their new structure. But we are not supposed to see that from ESL going forward. The new mandate at ESL has to be how do we grow and legitimize esports, particularly Counter Strike, because that is the game that they have the most control over? Because Valve is the developer that allows them to have control. And so, one of those things is how do we spend money intelligently to grow and legitimize this? And in my opinion, one thing that they could do, and one thing that Blast could do, and other tournament organizers, is if they care about having a good governing body is that they could co-fund ESIC transparently, give them the resources to hire full-time people, give them the resources to pay legitimate people within the scene to form a council to make these decisions who are OG esports people, uh, who can actually speak to say, as you said earlier, the problem is they don't know the game. So you have some sort of governing body where you pay people to contribute or sit on, sit in a, in a committee to make these decisions. Now, the problem with this obviously is I'm very wary because 
anytime you create a governing body like FIFA or the Olympic Committee, it opens you up to in absolutely nutty corruption, which is what we've we've seen. And that's why I want esports as far the fuck away from the Olympics as it could possibly be. Sure. But I think that if you actually do this properly and you spend some time thinking about it, that one of the things that could benefit the esports, so we don't have these, you know, joke bans and we have something that people can be really confident in, in terms of their judgments, but it would require the TOs to fund it. It would require maybe Valve to also chip in to fund it and for everybody to take what they say seriously and to allow them to render the final judgment, which is a very tough pill to swallow because you know you're going to be paying for something that inevitably is going to not go your way at some point in time. But if we're talking about how we create a really, really good thing for the robustness and longevity of the scene and the growth of the sport and legitimacy, it has to be something like that. And I hope that that is part of the new mandate. And it's something that I think all games need, because as we know, the developer run esports, you know, that we see with Activision, Blizzard, and Riot, their investigations are a sham. Their judgments are a sham. They have no internal logic to the way that they issue punishments or run or operate their leagues. So it has to be something independent and it has to be something cooperative. And it has to include some of the most keyed in people within the, the world of Counter-Strike. But this is an opportunity to really create this and make a model of it for other esports going forward and it is uniquely possible within the counter-strike community or you could just send every single case to mahorn have him watch it and tell us whether they cheated or not because he is obviously like some sort of godlike you know fucking seer who like the oracle of delphi or something who you can just go to but, but, he's perfectly I mean, seriously. Unbiased and has no possible conflicts with. No, whatever. You get the joke. On me. What, what, but what do, what do you guys want to see? Because like it, the coaching it's the real problem, and- Monty. It's the same problem as every other area of esports. It goes like this: there are people who could actually fix it. Like the joke is that's why I bring up the scoots example. Like. If this was 10 years ago, the mission would be, why doesn't Richard just do it? That really would be the first fucking step. The problem is, like, he doesn't have to get, he's not here to be a martyr to give his whole life to esports, to take all the shit from every single person. And then at the same time, the same people (laughs) turn around and go, do this thing just selflessly and I'll be your fucking tuppence. Like, like that's the problem. There are the legit people, but at the moment. It has to be real real funded. I mean, this would cost millions of dollars a year. Well, first things first, good luck getting anyone to fucking break open their wallet to pay for something that actually matters esports no one does that apparently and then mm. the other thing i would say is like we just haven't in the esports space incentivized the legit people to do these things unfortunately you know yeah i just there's think people I, I would trust like I would, I would like the joke is again if we were back in time 10 years ago and this was like richard lewis sir scoots like pick a bunch of other people that were legit back then they, they would be amazing mirror or something i don't know go through the line pick all the pick a couple of player coaches that you can trust some like yanko yanko from the very beginning of the coaching thing said i was never involved i didn't do any of it he's actively called people out who did that like there's not, the bit the obvious people who could help are here but the point is like why would they help what seems like a joke org you know, well, no, but, but, but I mean, I some agree, random guys is, six figures to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, this is this is a unique opportunity because of the new mandate that has been given to ESL, right? And it's it's unique here because other developer run esports, as we potentially approach a recession, are cutting back. We know the budgets in Valorant are getting slashed. We know the budgets in League of Legends are. So getting we're really slashed. turning to the Saudis, like save us, and then they look down. No. Based, based attack take this L Western. I mean, it's a weird. They're not going to save situation. us money. It's a weird situation to be in, but this the one East where there are there is the independence and resources to maybe accomplish that. I'm not saying they are going to do it. I'm just saying that this is a this is the only shot. Oh, I, I, put it this way: the, the real point what he wants is that the last thing he said there. The emphasis is you can't do it in the other games. Like Riot and Blizzard are in your way, and spoiler, they're utterly corrupt anyway. Like obviously, Blizzard's on that got milk fucking commercial from the nineties that Richard might remember from the old American comic books, and then fucking Riot's whole shit is like don't don't get it. sabotage Beastie Boys in it, just fucking sabotage all the women's lawyers and that. So like you can't expect these people to fucking police the game. So yeah, you are right. CS:GO is the only one, but as I say. <laughs> like no, uh, another meme. Irony. Like you would have to be pretty desperate to come to me for help. Says exactly. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Al Sabah. Exactly. Like, come on, Bob, <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. It, you, we may not like it, but it's the best. Don't call shot. me cynical or anything, but you know. <laughs> oh no, I mean look, that's absolute nonsense. Um, you you couldn't have you couldn't have any any. I mean, like as it stands, it's already problematic because we know ESL pay 
what is presumed to be a disproportionate amount of money to Isaac. One of the reasons why a lot of people didn't want to buy I'm assuming they're the main funding partner, right? I'm Isaac assuming they're the main ones. A Trojan horse to get ESL all up in your shit. So that was why people like face it. Hilarious, we would be like, no, we refuse to acknowledge Isaac, and now you just fucking, now you just ESL's fucking afterbirth, owned by the fucking Saudis, the little boy in the room, sent you executives on this podcast to fucking say things that just are now already demonstrably not true. So you know, I don't I mean, what even is face it at this point? Like, what even is it? You got FPL, that's about it, right? So, um, but anyway. You know, so no, you couldn't have them run it. You can't have anyone. Here's, here's the hilarious thing. It's like that old adage, isn't it? Anyone who wants to be a police officer, you know, it can't be one. And so the problem we've got is anybody that says we would we would happily police the scene and put money into it, almost certainly can't for a number of reasons. It's not um, that they would run it. It's that they would fund an independent body. And again, the, it would clap them back at some point in time, inevitably was my point, that's, right? Yeah, but so, that's essentially what we have. The problem is the one we've got now, uh, it, right, this was as good This was as good a shot as we had. This really was. Isak was as good as it could have potentially been. You have people from real sports, you know, I say real sports, cricket, right? But, you know, it kind of counts, right? Uh, <laughs> people from a real sporting background, but crucially, real lawyers with an understanding of sports. You know, Ian has represented... Uh, you know, he's he's essentially prosecuted match fixes on behalf of cricket, it's cricket's governing body, but he's also got a he's also appealed for people who we thought had bands that were too harsh. He's been on both sides of the equation, and so that was what I thought. That that's why I thought this guy can be the guy. But what I've what I've come to realize is, you know, it's and it's not just a single Ian out. You know, the, the whole entity is that they they just never had a handle on esports. When they came in and said, "We will, we will start policing match fixing in e in esports," I don't think they realized how much there was. When they said, "We will police, you know, cheating in esports," I don't think they realized how, you know, how it differs from game to game, and how you really have to understand the game and the cheats and how it all works to even declare yourself as an authority fit to police it. They said we're gonna do doping in each, but that's the dumbest fucking thing of all time. The dumbest thing of all time. You know when Riot fucking staff are saying fucking interview. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. When Riot staff are saying to me, we can never do drugs tests in LCS because every American player would pop for fucking Adderall. How could you drugs test at a Call of Duty event? I am amazed half those cunts have teeth left. <laughs> It's ridiculous, mate. They look like half of them look like fucking meth heads. It's it, you know you see them visibly on screen, sweat pouring down their face, grinding away like, oh yeah, nothing going on here, lads. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Like, how could you ever do it? By the way, like I, I, I'm gonna just say it. Like, do we even know who's done the who's done the definitive Adderall makes you an esports god study? Point me to it. Oh, that's right. It doesn't exist. So why why do we even give a fuck about doping? It was like, again, when ESL wanted to come in and try and get a fucking PR win, started swabbing the players. Like, they swabbed Guardian. Do you think he's on meth? <laughs> like, do you think he's on Addies, mate? You've seen the size of him? It's, you, don't, you just insulted the great... out as well. I know. <laughs> you're, just insulting, you're just insulting a great fucking player. What an insult. What an insult. Because what? Because some dickhead Americans like decided to, you know, talk out a turn in a fucking off the cuff interview. It's like, man, come the fuck on. It's not a big issue for me. The doping, but they have a whole thing about it. They put resources into it. They have a code of conduct around it. Blah, blah, blah. It, 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 it's just like, it, you know, I, I just don't think they really understood what they were getting themselves into. And the whole last year, 18 months, whatever it's been, They've been trying to climb out and get back to like, let's just stick to basics. Let's get back to what we know, which is betting data and match fixing. That's what they do really well. But, you know, the, the, the community's just lost all confidence. And that was the only thing keeping the whole fucking illusion going, wasn't it? I think you can also tell which one of those like articles are bullshit or which one of those are just publicity stunts because all of those like the doping stuff when they became a member of WADA or whatever it is it's like when those go out on you know forbes.com 
and all the sea level management like tweets it out that's what you know this is just probably some bullshit it doesn't matter and it's just out there so that when someone googles it you know their name would pop up next to it but i think the problem is in esports in general let's talk like about construct it's just a vicious cycle where ideally valve would be the one funding it but they're never going to do it because they're hands off and they don't want to be entangled with it and then someone would have to follow up on where the funds are going how they, it's just too much hands on for them to do it so then the only other entities really that could do it is either the tos right or the players themselves through csppa right those are the only other parties that could fund something like this which is first of all i mean there are potentially some conflicts of interest there depending on how it's handled but also i mean esl obviously until recently but everyone is hemorrhaging money more or less so how much money do you really want to put if you're blast or if you're esl from last year into this governing into this body in regards oh, yeah. to sure you want to help out you want to do something but the reason why esl was doing tournaments like they did beforehand and why you have you know some sponsors uh, uh still on the show is well because they were trying to it's obvious as you guys know it's like it's a massive difference whether your company is publicly traded or not the main difference being your books are public there's quarterly reports right so you know i'm sure there was a mandate at some point for esl for like hey we can't have like four quarters in a red in a row for example we need to show some mm. like you know change in in trend or whatever it is and now that you know you're private again sure like the you know <laughs> just because esl is private doesn't mean they they can lose money you know ad infinitum right like at some point they need to start making money for this company but the timeline is probably a lot more relaxed it's, it's now than it's i think it's been out. pushed out quite a bit you know what i mean yeah exactly so, well, so I, for I would even go so far as to say i don't necessarily agree with that i think once you sell yourself out to the saudis uh you never need to worry about making a profit again because the Saudis aren't buying you because yes. they think you're a good business. They're buying you to occupy the cultural capital. They sports that's washing, all, yeah. Th th that's all they give a fuck about. And that, that's the thing as well. It's like, it's not even really esports washing as we used to conceptually think about it, right? Because esports washing, when it first started happening and Russia was doing it, particularly, they were like, I want to say the, you know, the, the progenitors of it in a lot of ways. What 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 they were doing was, hey, Putin's just killed a fucking journalist again, right? Victor, please just let go or whatever the fuck his name was. That one who died of radiation poisoning is. But don't worry, we we're gonna have a World Cup and here's all this other stuff. So you know, yeah, you win some, you lose some. Human rights violations, fucking wicked sporting events, you know. And nice vodka, you know, whatever. So you, you're bewildered and blinded by it. That's why they call it washing, you know. But now what Saudi does and what Qatar has done and what uh, the United Arab Emirates are doing is, and, and China as well in, in some areas, they, they, are, they, they put the money in and they put so much money in and they wait for you to become reliant on it and then they come to you and they make you an offer you can't refuse because they can turn your fucking lights out. And what it's about is it's about having the guarantee of the message, whatever the message needs to be at any given time. And and this is and, and this is why you saw in Qatar the England team folded. We're not wearing the one love arm band. Ooh, we really care about gay rights, just not enough to get a yellow card, unfortunately. Um and, and they know you're gonna fold. And so basically, it, it, it's no joke to say. You will see ESL advertise some unsavory shit. It's a, matter of yeah. it's a matter of time before Neom's on there. Yep. You know, it seems so, inevitable at this point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's hundred percent inevitable. And that's why they're doing it. There's it's not about the profit. Yes, it's I about it's it, it, it's about normalizing evil shit in the eyes of people who would just be, you know, uh, you, you you would never agree to it if it was your government. You would By never way, agree to it. This actually, what you were saying earlier as well about like the, the fact that they've tried to do too many things, I think that's also one of the number one things you have to address about the ESIC thing. It's like narrow the fucking focus. Make it like one thing and be really good at it and nail it. So for example, I would tell you what I would make my number one rule tomorrow. It's what CSPPA already does just by virtue of the fact that it's the top players. It's only about, CSPPA realistically is an association of tier one professionals. It isn't all Counter-Strike players. It isn't Counter-Strike players in China. It, it's none of that. Like, because they could 
not only would they not waste their resources on that, but no one gives a fuck, let's be real, except for tier one pros. So, spoiler, first of all, the way I knew ESIC was really in trouble right out of the gate is they called it the eSports Integrity Coalition. You're doing all of eSports now. You know, I'm, I'm the person who has to face that t- fucking stupid line a million times for the last 10 years. Like, you're calling yourself an eSports historian, but mm. you've done nothing on Smash. Like, there wasn't even a game when I started you more, and there was, what, four games, and one of them was Quake. Like, like in this scenario, you're not the eSports Integrity Coalition. You're the CSGO Integrity Coalition, and best case scenario, just take care of tier one. If you can just take care of tier one, that fixes, yeah. by the way, 99% of what we care about. Because as Richard says, we all, if you're not a moron at this point in time, understand the score of what happens when even though we're not in the online era anymore, you have one of those giant cops that starts with all the Swiss systems and then magically those top 10 ranked teams drop in at the quarterfinals and they sure drop out of the quarterfinals and the semifinals a lot, don't they? Magically in matches where they would be like 8 to 1 fucking, like the other team would be an 8 to 1 underdog and what do you know? Because it's just a side tournament, we've tripped over and lost the best of three. There's even top fucking orgs doing that. Everyone understands, I hope, if you're listening, what the score is there. The point is, that's the rot is too deep there, boys. That even implies, by the way, every business below a certain level just has to do that to make up for when you fail a big event, you don't make a major or whatever. So that's, it's too far. You can't fix that. At least just fix... ESL events, blast events, tier one Counter Strike. Let's just get rid of cheating coaches, cheating players, people doing match fixing. That's all I'd ask. Because if you narrow the fucking purview to that, it might be doable. If it isn't, like you say earlier, Richard, you can't be wasting my time falsely accusing fucking Australian guys that I'm never going to see at an ESL land of doing match fixing. You can't be wasting my time soon. Someone was doing some like low level match fixing in like MDL. I, 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 listen, not only have you not nailed those cases, is no one really cares. Thing, if it's no a one really dunk, does. If it's a slam dunk, yes. do it all day long. If it's if, if it's the fucking train wreck that it fucking was, not only have you wasted your time, you've seriously undermined your credibility. You were only you only had a handful of things you could get wrong as ESIC. You could only fuck up X amount of times. And I think they're past it. They need somebody to fall on the sword over there. It's the only way you're going to change public perception. Like Ian, I guess it would have to be, unfortunately, is going to have to come out and say, yes, listen, you know, I have multiple projects, took my eye off the ball. I will be taking a backward step and I will now sit on the board in an advisory position. And this is the new person who's going to take over. And you give some shit hot, like mad impressive appointment. So only way it's the only way back because if it's just the same old same old no one's going to care next time you ban somebody and whoever it is they're going to lawyer up and you're going to and you're going to fold again see more cool funny interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't